Hi everyone. The purpose of this video is threefold. One, to provide you with an update from the WRC regarding mandatory COVID-19 testing in the workplace. Two, to provide you with an update in relation to our campaign to lobby the Data Protection Commissioner to provide guidance on whether premises other than indoor dining can ask for your vaccination status under GDPR. And three, to ask you to sign up to receive updates on our campaigns through the ICHR website. So first we will look at a recent ruling made by the Workplace Relations Commission regarding PCR testing in the workplace. Now, this ruling may appear less relevant considering the government have issued guidelines asking people to work from home again. However, it will still be relevant for those working in the office and on sites and also once a return to the office is recommended for all. This case concerns a man named Michael Caulfield who was employed as a maintenance manager with Hickey Fabrication Services since 2007. On the 1st of February 2021, Michael was advised by his employer that he may have been a close contact and was told to stay at home and take a PCR test. Michael declined to take the test and he was informed by his employer on the 4th of February 2021 that he could not return to the office for 14 days and that this period would be unpaid as the company did not operate a paid sick leave scheme. Michael considered this to be unfair partially because other workers who were also deemed close contacts and all of whom had consented to the PCR test were permitted to return to work before getting their test results back. This against the backdrop of the employer suggesting that Michael was not permitted to return to work because his refusal to submit to PCR testing endangered the safety and well-being of other employees. I personally find this position to be extraordinary given that those who submitted to PCR testing were allowed back to work without receiving a negative test result. It would appear that the danger the employer felt subsided when an employee submitted to PCR testing as opposed to when they received a negative test result. At best, this is contradictory. At worst, it suggests that the employer's main issue was non-compliance with their instruction. I really don't see how any other conclusion could be reached on this point as submission to a PCR test cannot be said to reduce the chances of that person testing positive. In this case, the adjudicator found that the employer had invoked a temporary layoff through their correspondence dated the 4th of February 2021 and as such he was not required to pay Michael from the 4th of February until his return to work on the 15th of February 2021. The adjudicator found that the period between the 1st of February and the 4th of February was not a valid temporary layoff because the employer had not given notice in advance of the temporary layoff. The takeaways from this case are as follows. 1. It is likely that if you refuse to submit to testing where you are deemed a close contact, your employer can insist that you self-isolate at home. 2. In circumstances where the company you work for does not have a paid sick leave scheme, if your employer writes to you telling you that your self-isolation will be unpaid, then it is quite likely that this will be upheld by the WRC. 3. If the company you work for has a paid sick leave policy, you still may not be entitled to pay if the company invoke the temporary layoff provision, which is more than likely in your employment contract or your employee handbook. However, if the company fail to refer to this period of self-isolation as being unpaid, it is quite likely that you would be entitled to be paid during this period. 4. In the present case, there was no mention of the employee having to pay for the cost of testing. I am aware that some employers are suggesting that workers who are not vaccinated must submit to weekly testing to continue in their employment and that the employee must cover the cost of this testing. In this case, employees having to suffer the cost of testing is clearly being used as a coercive tool to encourage employees to get vaccinated. In such cases, testing is said to be necessary for health and safety. In this regard, it is my view that the employer must pay the cost for any such testing arising from their general duties under Section 8 of the Safety, Health and Welfare Work Act 2005. In circumstances where an employer is insisting that an employee pay the cost of any such testing, the employee should write to the employer requesting that they set out where in their contract of employment or in statute, meaning law, the employee is liable for the cost of the employer providing a safe place of work. I am attaching a link to the WRC ruling in the description box of this video so that you can review the ruling yourself. The second issue that we will look at is new guidance that has been issued by the Data Protection Office in relation to businesses and venues who are imposing vaccine passport mandates without being required by law. 
You might recall that we commenced a campaign on the 3rd of October 2021 asking people to write to the Data Protection Office to make a complaint regarding excessive data collection by businesses in the hopes that if we applied enough pressure to the Data Commissioner, they would issue new guidance on the legality of any such processing. Our campaign in this respect has been successful in that the Data Commissioner has recently issued updated guidance titled Vaccine Certificate Check, which deals with the question, can I check the COVID certificate of customers and visitors to my premises? Unfortunately, that's where the good news ends. The summary position from this guidance is that if the government have issued public health advice, so this means guidelines, not law, which recommend that businesses or venues impose a vaccine passport mandate as a condition of entry to activities, events and mass gatherings on their premises, then those businesses and venues may lawfully process special categories of data, including vaccination status information. In this regard, the Data Commissioner is suggesting that this may be lawful under the heading of processing is necessary in the interest of public health. Noting, however, that this guidance only applies to businesses and venues where public health guidelines recommend the implementation of vaccine passports. I'm attaching a link to the data protection guidance in the description box of this video so that you can view it yourself. As we said previously, we need to exhaust every avenue, so do not look at this as a defeat. A complaint to the data commissioner is still relevant with respect to businesses and venues who have not been advised by the government to implement vaccine passports, and we will still continue to use a breach of GDPR in any correspondence that we send to businesses, but we will also now rely on a claim of legal liability, including damages. And we will also endeavour to apply more coordinated pressure and action on these businesses, which I discuss in the final part of this video. So the final issue I wish to bring to your attention is a new section on the ICHR website that allows you to sign up to receive updates on our campaigns. I'm attaching in the description box of this video a link to the homepage of the ICHR. If you scroll to the end of the homepage, you will be prompted to enter your email address if you want to receive such updates. Please sign up today as we intend to start issuing regular updates via this medium regarding businesses and venues who are imposing vaccine passports in an effort to encourage those who have signed up to receive our updates to put pressure on these businesses such that they reverse their discriminatory policies. We are also asking people to write to the ICHR to inform us of the names of businesses and venues who are requesting vaccine passports such that we can inform those on our circulation lists which businesses and venues to lobby. I am aware that many people are enduring indescribable suffering due to the recent notice that nursing homes will only permit entry to those who have proof of immunity. In this regard, if you could please send us the names of any such nursing homes today, we will issue a template letter today to all those who sign up to receive our updates such that we can immediately start applying pressure to this industry. Please send your emails to info at ICHR.ie. I ask you to please share this video as any lobbying around nursing homes and other businesses will only have an impact if we can get enough people willing to sign up to receive updates through the ICHR such that we can start to apply coordinated and large scale pressure. Thanks for listening.